Hi guys, you're going to need handout two and a pencil for today's video. Okay, the topic of today is diatonic collections. You will also sometimes hear these referred to as diatonic modes or even church modes, uh, which is actually a significantly different topic, but I will not go down that rabbit hole today. I'm guessing that most of you, if you're in skills four, have actually already gone, gone over this in some capacity with your skills for instructor. But regardless, I am going to go down the sort of list of modes here on the handout. I might explain them in a different way than you got in skills four. Um, so this might be helpful. If not, you are as always free to fast forward or listen at 1.5 speed. So when we're talking about the diatonic modes, we are talking about rotating the same collection of pitches, the same series of half and whole steps, and just shifting the centric pitch. And by that, we talked about pitch centricity in video one. We're talking about just changing which note is the most important, which note is basically tonic. Now, what I have written down here are all seven diatonic modes using only the white keys of this of the piano. So starting with C major, which is also known as C Ionian, and then just rotating the same seven pitches, shifting where we kind of frame that seven note system. Now looking at these really quickly, yes, there are seven modes that you have to know, but you already know two of them. Obviously this very first one, Ionian is synonymous with the major mode that you are super familiar with already. And then if you look down to the penultimate system, Aeolian, that is framed from A to A. So all of the white keys of the piano framed from A to A, and it sounds like this. Which hopefully is recognizable to you as the natural minor scale. So of those seven diatonic modes, you already know two of them. Looking at the remaining five modes then, I have these little triangular brackets that indicate the half-step pairs. Knowing those half-step pairs is going to be pretty critical to you being able to quickly identify the mode both orally and on paper. Since we're dealing with the same collection of notes, the half, the half and whole step pair sequence remains the same. We're just shifting where those half steps lie. I have this little note at the bottom. Uh, Locrian mode is, is pretty rare. Uh, you will encounter it. There actually are some cool jazz tunes that play around with Locrian, but the mode itself is, is pretty rare we're going to see the other six in much more abundance. Now let's look over at the second page of your handout. The big question, how do I remember which of these is which? There are a couple ways to approach that. Um, one way is to, and this is mostly for oral identification, but helps with written as well, thinking about these modes as derivatives of the major and minor scales that will help you identify them in terms of how they sound. Oh, this mode sounds like this. This mode sounds like an alteration to the minor scale. And also just on the page, it will also um, help you quickly identify these in the wild. With that in mind, let's go back to the first page then and take a look at these modes as they're notated here. Now we are going to kind of parse these out into major-ish modes and minor-ish modes. And the first thing that's going to help us do that is let's figure out the relationship between scale degrees one and three, because that is kind of the essence of major and minor modes for us. If scale degrees one to three are a major third, it has a major sound for us. If they're a minor third, it has a minor sound. So go ahead and go through these five remaining modes that I haven't marked up already and just jot down whether they are major derivatives or minor derivatives. And that is going to be 
the result of the relationship between scale degrees one and three. So go ahead and get that started. Okay, so what I have here is just the third between scale degrees one and three bracketed off for each of the five remaining modes. Now, just by looking at that, then you can see that we have three minor ish modes and two major ish modes. Now, our job is to figure out what the alteration is from the baseline major or natural minor. We can do this in two ways. One is I am going to play each scale for you and have you kind of try and orally figure out what the alteration is. And two, you can also think of it in terms of the minor scale or the major scale and see what accidentals are there or missing that you would need. So let's go with this Dorian scale. I'm going to play it for you. sounds exactly like natural minor with one exception. Now, if your ears already flagged it for you, you likely then heard that scale degree six was an unexpected pitch if we're thinking about natural minor. Now your job is to figure out, was it too high? Was it too low? And by how much? Now, if you think about this D Dorian scale, this Dorian scale that starts on D, we're saying it's related to D natural minor. Can you really quickly dig in your brain and figure out what the key signature to D natural minor would be? Now, hopefully your response was it would have one flat. That flat would have been B flat. So that scale degree six, we would expect it to be B flat if it was natural minor. But as we heard, it was a little too high. So this scale degree six is raised by a half step from natural minor. That is the alteration. Let's take a listen to the Phrygian scale then. So look at it quickly. We have E tonic. So maybe in your brain, you're already thinking, okay, what would be the key signature for an E minor scale? And I'm going to play this for you. you likely heard something funky right from the jump, right? The Dorian scale, we got over halfway through before we heard something weird. The Phrygian scale, we get the curious note right off the bat. And this is really, really kind of crucial to the Phrygian scale is that it has this flattened scale degree too. So Phrygian is a natural minor sounding scale with a lowered scale degree. Two. And again, if you're thinking key signatures, E minor, key signature is one sharp. So we've taken away that F sharp and given an F natural instead. Okay, two major type scales. Let's get through these real quick. Lydian, here's what it sounds like. F tonic, this one should be pretty easy. Scale degree four was your alteration. So Lydian sounds like a major scale with a raised scale degree four. Now Mixolydian, also a major type scale. Right at the tail end there, we hear, hear the alteration. Mixolydian sounds like a major scale with a lowered scale degree seven. And last but not least, let's listen to Locrian. And this might also give you an idea as to why it is not used very often. It is a minor type scale. We have a minor third between scale degrees one and three. So let's give it a listen. Locrian has a very um, a kind of foreign sound to our ears because all of these diatonic modes that we've gone through so far have had one alteration to their major or minor scale. Locrian is unique in that it actually has two alterations. 
So if we think, we heard that half step right at the beginning again. So related to Phrygian in that way, where there's a half step between scale degrees one and two. But the other alteration, a little bit later in the scale, and it's on scale degree five. So what we hear with Locrian is two alterations that lower the original pitch by a half step. One of those alterations is on scale degree two, which is the same as we see in Phrygian. The other one is on scale degree five. And that alteration to the dominant pitch has a lot of implications uh, potentially for how you would use the Locrian scale in terms of kind of harmonic polarity with an alteration on your dominant. Now you've got to figure out an alternate kind of harmonic pole. Um, maybe you'll use the subdominant instead. Maybe you'll use the six chord. And I'm sort of addressing this to those of you who might want to compose for uh, your capstone project. This is something to think about um, if you might want to infuse your capstone composition with Locrian mode in some way. Okay, now, so that's one way you can train your ear and your eyes to identify what mode is what out in the wild. Um, another one, and this is what I learned, is this mnemonic device. Um, if anyone <laughs> wants to come up with one that's not as dorky, please do. Uh, I've been using this one for 15 years. Um, but this device gives you an, a quick access to what mode is what. So the bolded letters, the first letter of each word, this spells out for you the modes in order, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixed Lydian, Aeolian, Locrian. You have to remember that the two L's are different, right? Remember that Lydian comes first, Locrian comes at the end. The idea of this mnemonic device is you can now pair up which scale degree each mode starts on. So the example I have here, Lydian, that L, IDPL, it's the fourth letter in the mnemonic device. The Lydian scale degree begins on major scale degree four. So I'm going to swing us back to the first page. Ionian begins on major scale degree one, Dorian on two, Phrygian three, there's Lydian major scale degree four. And last but not least, you can remember each mode by its distinct pair of half steps because every single mode has a different pair of half steps. Um, this, I find this to be cumbersome. I, I'm going to be perfectly honest. If you <laughs> asked me oh, the pairs of half steps to any given mode, um, I would have to think for a hot second before I answered you correctly. So I do find this one to be a little more difficult, um, but everyone learns and absorbs information differently. So that might be your pathway. Okay. Now, obviously, modes can be transposed to begin on any pitch. We have been dealing with the white key modes, um, just for kind of notation ease and to see that rotation, but they can begin on any of the 12 chromatic pitches. So let's work out a couple of modes in notation on the staff. This first mode then, I'm asking you to spell an F sharp Dorian scale. What that means, and I have it in parentheses, is you're going to build a Dorian scale that starts on F sharp. I am going to walk you through a couple of ways to process this out. First off, you know your first note is going to be F sharp, so let's go ahead and just do that. Now, F sharp Dorian. Go through the mnemonic device in your head. Dorian is the second word in the mnemonic. That means Dorian starts on your major scale degree two. So that is one way to think of it. If F sharp is two, who is scale degree one? This one is really easy. Two to one is a nice, easy transition. You go down by major second, right? So E is scale degree one. Now that tells you that you are going to use the E major key signature. Now I'm not letting you write with key signatures, but you can easily translate that to what accidentals you're going to need. E major key signature, four sharps. So that means you've got your F sharp already. You're gonna need a G sharp 
You're going to need a C sharp and a D sharp. That's one way to go about this process. Find who scale degree one is and then work out the key signature from there. Let's talk about a different way. I'm going to actually erase everything I just did and walk through this in a different process. So listen along and see maybe if this is an easier one for you. F sharp Dorian, we know it starts on F sharp. We also know that the Dorian scale is a minor mode derived scale. So let's take a look here. It is a natural minor scale that has a raised scale degree six. So scale degree six is raised by a half step. With that knowledge then, let's build an F sharp natural minor scale. To do that, you might be thinking key signatures again. So we'll start with F sharp natural minor, which is a key signature of three sharps. So you've got your F sharp, you've got your G sharp, and your C sharp. Now, that is F sharp natural minor. You've got to do the next step in order to make it Dorian. That means you need to raise scale degree six by a half step. One, two, three, four, five. There is our scale degree six. That D natural needs to get raised by half step to D sharp. The end result for both of these pathways is the correct F sharp Dorian scale. You may of course take either pathway. Uh, as long as you get the right answer, I have no complaints. You, so you can also go by half step pairs if that's what works for you. Knowing that Dorian has a half step pair between two and three and another one between six and seven, you can build the scale, scale that way. Now I'd like you to try one on your own. So go ahead and spell out again with accidentals, no key signatures, a D mixolydian scale using either of those two processes. And then we will check our work together. Okay, so what you see in front of you is the D mixolydian scale written out and also an abbreviated version of both of those pathways. So what I wrote up here on the top Mixolydian is built off of scale degree five. So if D is scale degree five, that means G is scale degree one, you use the G major key signature, which means one sharp. So that's one pathway to do this. And then down here, I have the second option. Mixolydian is a major scale with a flat seven. So I wrote a D major scale, and then I lowered scale degree seven by a half step. So I took away the C sharp and that got me the Mixolydian scale. All right, last thing we're gonna do, we're going to do two different things. One is to figure out the key signature of a piece by its mode and tonic. And the other is to write a mode given a key signature. So let's give a listen to this piece. Yeah. Baby, don't make me spell it out for you. All of the feelings that I got for you. Can't be explained, but I can try for you. Yeah, baby, don't make me spell it out for you. You keep on asking me the same questions. Why? And second guessing all my intentions. Should know by the way I use my compression. That you got the answers to my confessions. Okay, so let's work out what mode we are dealing with with this tune. So um, I'm going to just sort of give you, here's tonic on the keyboard. I'll tell you it's F sharp. And I'm gonna play the first little bit of the melody with that tonic pedal just sort of sitting underneath. So here's tonic, we start on scale degree three in the melody, right? Three, five, six, seven, seven, six, five, five, four, three. Let's listen to one and three for starters. Major third, right? So it's a major derived mode. Here's scale degree seven. Can you tell me what type of seventh that is? No, 
Now, hopefully you are saying the minor seventh. Now, in a regular old major scale, that would be a major seventh, right? So what mode then are we dealing with? What is our mode that is major derived, but has a lowered scale degree seven? We actually just wrote one out over here. This piece is an F sharp mixolydian. Let's say you have to transcribe this and you wanna use no accidentals. You want it to lie completely within the key signature. How would you go about figuring out what key signature is appropriate then? Well, one way is to just write out the pitches. I'm gonna do that in letter names. So F sharp is our tonic, obviously. And again, this is a major derived scale with a lowered scale degree seven. So let's go ahead and start by writing out F sharp major scale. So there's an F sharp major scale. It has six sharps. Now we have to take scale degree seven and we need to lower it by half step. So that E sharp then is going to become E natural. So there's our F sharp mixolydian scale. Now, can you tell me from there what key signature would be most appropriate for this transcription? This is pretty easy. You count how many accidentals you have. So we have one, two, three, four, five sharps. So your key signature then for this transcription, if you were tasked with one, would be a key signature of five sharps, also known as the B major key signature. Let's go the opposite way. How about if I gave you a key signature and asked you to notate a scale with no accidentals? So let's say I gave you a key signature of three flex and I want you to build me a Phrygian scale. You're not allowed to use accidentals. You have to live entirely within the key signature. So let's think about this. We can go back to this hand, to the first page of the handout. Your Phrygian scale is built off of what major scale degree? Ionian is built off of one, Dorian two. Phrygian is built off of your major scale degree three. So if I'm telling you that your key signature has three flats, what major key is that? E flat major, right? Now, can you find scale degree three of the E flat major scale for me? I know that you all can. G is scale degree three. Now, I promise you, if you play from G to G with a three flat key signature, your result will be a Phrygian scale. And to prove it, I'm gonna play it. So here's a G. I'm gonna play from G to G with the E flat major key signature. I needed to make no alterations. I just played G to G with the E flat major key signature and voila, I had a Phrygian scale. That is probably the most annoying of the tasks I can ask you to do with modes. And there are two of those on the worksheet. All right, worksheet one is available for you on Blackboard. Uh, you'll do some mode spelling with accidentals and some mode writing from a key signature like we did at the very end there. It's actually on the staff, not just like with weird letter names like I was doing. Uh, and then there's a little question at the bottom. Um, so if you've got questions, let me know. But that worksheet is due at class time on Wednesday if you choose to do it.